Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 38 of FTB Infinity Evolved Skyblock Mode. Um, right now I'm recording this video only a couple hours after the end of the previous one. I wasn't planning on recording another video today, however I found that I had some time on my hands. And as it turns out, we have just barely enough slime balls, 13,000, to make the 28 enhanced Calgadoria blocks we need for the creative energy cell. So I figured, hey, may as well just get started now. Um, we look at our remaining slime. Yeah, we, we have just a few hundred remaining. Uh, but turns out if we make enough slime for one energy cell, in like, uh, it's been about three hours, I think. So three hours per energy cell is fast enough. I don't need to spawn slimes any faster than we are. Anyways, this crafting is going to take a little while because uh, we have to craft a lot of magma cream because we're only getting slime balls and blaze powder. Um... But Applied Iron Just is going to take care of this all behind the scenes. So all we need left to craft our uh, our creative energy cell, I think, is the crafting table. These 9x9 nine nine recipes are made in the dire crafting table. So, yeah, no, this doesn't look half bad at all. Uh, let me encode these recipes to auto-craft it. Um, unfortunately, we can't actually auto craft on the dire crafting table but uh we can at least auto craft the table itself right by uh, the looks of things i expect it to only take yeah a, a fair amount of diamonds but this late in the game 155 diamonds is nothing so give me one dire crafting table please um there it goes and voila so uh, i'll just put this here for now it's just a simple 9x9 crafting table. Alright, we're going to need our hazmat suit for this. In fact, I'm going to move our hazmat suit over because uh, we're using the RTG fuel, which is radioactive. Now let me snag this and we'll move it over to our... Right here. When I searched Draconic in the AU system to get my Draconic Flux Capacitors, the uh, gas cell is exceptionally large. Um... I don't know, not, part, not relevant for anything, just uh, a little annoying, I guess. Anyways, let's grab all the supplies we need and put them into the crafting table. Um, so it's nine solar panels surrounded by 16 flux capacitors, 16 resident energy cell frames, Eight pellets of RTG fuel, which I'm going to put the suit on before we pick up. At least I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is industrial craft and it's radioactive. I'm like 99% sure it kills you if you don't wear the suit. These go here. Thank you, suit. Four blocks of lumium in the corners. And all that remains are those Galgadorium blocks, which we'll be crafting for the next at least six minutes so while we wait for that um let's take a look at what would follow after the creative energy cell we could use the creative energy cell to make more energy if needed it outputs 100k rf per side um so six side that's 600k rf there's tricks you can do to extract i think 10 times as much out of each side with a uh, draconic evolution it's a lot of power i don't i don't know i don't need it maybe maybe we'll do that but um the next step is to turn it into the, uh, to make four of them and turn it into the creative portable tank. This is somewhat useful and this recipe is actually just very easy. Aside from the creative energy cells themselves, right? Like this is a resident machine frame gets you 16 of the glass. Um, that's basically one, one resident machine frame. And this is just a little bit of bedrock here, which is basically, you know, we, we can make that very easily at this stage. Um, after that, though, we have to take the tank and turn it into the Everlasting Guilty Mana Pool. The hardest part of this are these four crystal clusters. So let me turn NEI back on and pin one of them. Crystal clusters require Gaia Spirit, so we have to kill the Gaia Guardian. Um, that's not particularly difficult, but or, and these Nell Catalysts, but these can be crafted. Yeah, they're trivially easy to craft, uh, but they require these Soul Shards and Life Shards. These require doing the Convocation of the Damned, which is the high, one of the highest tier blood, ritual, blood magic rituals. So let's get started working towards that. First of all, we're going to need a tier 6 altar for it. 
So right now our altar is at tier four, getting into or maybe we only need a tier five altar. Um yeah, actually the crystal cluster is used to make the tier six altar, right? So we can't possibly need a tier six altar. So let's get our altar to tier five. First of all, these capstones need to be beacons. So I apparently don't have an auto crafting recipe for beacons. Four beacons for the four corners. And then we just need to put a runes along the sides for now once again i'll just use blank runes or whatever basic runes what are these called blood runes um just so we can get our altar to tier five takes 52 i believe blood runes to well runes of any type to upgrade an altar from tier four to five so uh, i do not want it using balance shards let me go change that recipe to, uh not allow substitutions really quick here much better. We have way more water shards than we have balance shards. So once those are done crafting, I'll uh, swap out the placeholder blocks with blood runes. Exchangers makes this swapping process quite easy. Uh, thanks, Thomcraft. I really didn't want to play this game today. You know, I, I really like it when things I'm doing are interrupted by you. It really makes me think that your mod is the best in the world. All I want to do is play with Thomcraft a little more. Um. I have 16 left. I guess I was too far away. Alright, so that should upgrade our altar to tier 5. Uh, the divination sigil should be able to confirm that. Yep, it is now a tier 5 altar. Next step is to make the tier 5 blood orb. So this requires a demon blood shard, which requires summoning one of the blood magic demons. Um, it's been a little while since I've done this, so let me pull up the Blood Magic book and uh, refresh my memory on how we do that. Thankfully, the Blood Magic guidebook is very helpful in telling you what you need. So, uh, first gives you a few crafting recipes. Ignore the recipes, these are the default ones. Um, but anyways, you need one of these arcane plinths and six of these arcane pedestals. And then... Uh, set them up in a pattern like this we don't need the outer ring and we just have to put items on them to serve as like uh you know this is a bunch of lore but to summon the actual uh monster and then this section here describes what items you have to put on the outer uh like the outer plinths or whatever they're called to summon the various different types of mobs i think any of them will do for our purpose so I'll just pick the one that is easiest. No clue what that is. The arcane plinths are, or pedestals rather, crafted in the blood altar, 20,000 LP, which uh, our altar only holds 10, but 10,000. But the fact that it refills while it's crafting should be, uh, should mean that it's capable of crafting them. And then once the first one's done, I'll add it to the filter so that it automatically gets extracted. We need six of those plus an additional two to to trade for the plinth. So uh, this crafting takes a little while. Maybe you should invest in some like speed and sacrifice runes at some point. Nah. The trade also requires some null catalysts, which are normally like the end game witchery item. Um, however, in this path, they just require nether stars and a little bit of a. Uh, little bit of thomcraft anyways what is this uh this is mortis or something it appears we don't have yeah what has mortis in it i could yeah i can just use my ethereal essences all right this is oh easy there mouse this is way more mortis than i could possibly need so melt it all down Let's open up the Elven Gateway again. I don't actually know why it closed in the first place. It must have run out of mana at some point. But uh, we need a trade. Let me see what exactly it is. Two pedestals and a Null Catalyst. And I don't know if order matters, but I'm going to follow the order in any eye. And that gives us our plan. So let me get the last two pedestals and let's set up our little ritual area. I think the, uh, the demon that spawns can destroy blocks. So, I never did put a magnum torch over here. Um, let's just put a chandelier. I think it's just this corner is like at the very edge of range of our uh, 
Some torches, some mob spawn here. Anyways, we have to place the plinth in the middle, and the shape is... Pattern is strangely asymmetrical, but... No, I guess it's kind of symmetrical. I don't know. Pretty sure that's what it looks like. We need a master blood orb. So, yoink. And then on the pedestals, um, I'm going to put six aether because I think that's one of the demons that is easiest to fight. And before I do so, let's put my bow on my hotbar. Make sure it's in, yep, not explosive mode. And let the thing get summoned. I guess lightning strikes and consumes your materials. And a mob should pop out in a second. Actually... What's the uh, mob imprisonment tool called? There we go. Safari net. I'm gonna capture you and spawn a few more of them because we're gonna need more than one demon blood shard. This little guy seems harmless enough. I, what could go wrong if we just spawn a whole bunch of them in, right? Um, I mean, that one didn't break any blocks and didn't damage me any, so. Welcome to the world. There we go. And these are the blood charts we're after. So I'm going to get a handful of them. They seem like a reasonably rare drop. In total, I scooped up uh, 10 of them. Should be good enough for now. Let's start turning these into blood orbs. We're going to need a couple. Um, they Let's see, I think they, they said it takes 75,000 LP. We can probably craft them in this altar still if I augment the altar with uh, basically by eating hearts and, uh, and the sacrif sacrificial whatever while it crafts. Yeah, if I just let it craft on its own, it's gonna drain the altar faster than I can fill it. A far more sane option would have been to upgrade our altar with, like, functional runes so I didn't have to poke myself the whole time while crafting, but uh, I don't believe in sane options. Anyways, this now means that our life network should be able to hold, I think, 10 million LP, so let's start charging our altar towards that. And second thought, generating that 10 million LP to fill the blood orb without any functional runes on the altar is going to take forever. So let's start working on putting some functional runes on the altar. First, I want some runes of sacrifice and speed. Speed to increase crafting rate, sacrifice to get more blood. Let's start with the speed runes. Um, as long as we generate enough blood, these will have a greater impact on our altar's crafting rate. Well, really, it's the only thing that affects the altar's crafting rate. Each speed rune makes the altar 20% faster uh, additively, so 10 of them will take us from 100% crafting speed up to 300%. That should be a pretty marked increase. Next up are the runes of sacrifice. Each one of these increases blood generation by 10%, for sacrificing mobs, um, so if I want to match what I did with the speed runes to get it up to 300%, I need 20 sacrifice runes. Um, each use two of these daggers, which also have to be crafted in the blood altar, so that's 40 Arthanas, I believe. Yeah, I should be able to auto craft these. So uh, I'll just throw them in this chest here and let those craft. Um, with this switch so that we stop crafting runes for a minute. Made twice as many daggers as I need right now, so we can make 20 more runes of sacrifice down the line with them. But uh, for now, this should do. Make me 20 runes of sacrifice. The next type of rune I think I want is capacity. So there's two types of capacity runes, uh, augmented and superior capacity. Superior is a multiplicative increase per, and additive is a, or augmented is an additive increase. Somewhere around like 15 or 20, I think superior becomes better. So I'm going to build next 26, exactly 26 superior capacity runes. Why 26? I'll tell you in just a little bit. 
superior capacity runes require at a minimum an Archmage Blood Orb to craft, but that's not a problem because we just made an Archmage Blood Orb. So, give me 26 of these. Um, I want them all continuous, like touching each other, so I can easily swap them out as well. I think these are 13 to a side, right? That's convenient. We'll just do two sides with uh, 13 each for 26. I'm somewhat curious how much it'll increase our capacity by. So right now our capacity is 10,000. If I say swap, target that. And swap out, uh, start from there. And if I center it, it swaps out the entire side. Perfect. What's our new capacity? I'm sure, it's a lot more. Oh yeah, 120,000. Now we can actually craft the uh, Archmage Blood Orb without even having to uh, sacrifice our own blood, right? Because the altar holds enough LP to do the entire craft in one go. For the remaining rune slots, I think there's like 50-ish of them. I'm just going to do some randomish split of sacrifice and speed runes. Um, there's, however, there's one more rune type that I want to have some on hand, and that is orb. So runes of the orb increase the amount of LP that you can store in your life, net, life essence network by 2% each. Uh, apparently it takes three blood orbs to craft them. But, um... Yeah, it takes it increases by two percent each. So by using twenty six of them, that is exactly the same number as uh, capacity runes. We can increase the ten million that our Archmage Blood Orb holds to just a hair above fifteen million. Fifteen million is the magic number we need to reach in our life essence to begin the Convocation of the Damned. So my plan is when I'm charging my Blood Orb for the Convocation of the Damned, I'll just swap out the superior capacity runes or orb runes, and then once we're done with that, we can put our superior capacity runes back in. While those runes are crafting, uh, I noticed that our enhanced Galgadorium blocks are all done. So let's put all these in here and make our first creative energy cell. There we go. Ha! Ah, and there's our trophy. All right. Um, these energy cells, I don't believe, can be picked up by users in like that are not in creative mode. So there, there, can, there are various ways that you can move them, like things that move tile entities can move these. Um, but they're, that means they're difficult to move. So for now, I think I'm just going to set it up to pull 600k RF a tick out of it and jam it into our Tesseract. This here it pulls 100k RF a tick out of each side of the creative energy cell, which is the default limit. Um, and then put it into our energy producers tesseract, which, you know, connects to everything else. Um, but we'll see that systems like this are uh, charger here that charges our draconium. Now is receiving almost 600k RF attack. The rest of the energy is going elsewhere. But uh, yeah, we're now producing draconium a lot faster. Or at least we're producing charged draconium faster. I was able to turn this tesseract back on so that we are producing... Uh, producing iridium a little bit faster um yeah and uh i guess that that's really the gist of it the, the, there's not terribly much use for that energy but we have it now anyways i also finished up the speed runes so let's swap these in i love the uh exchangers makes life so much easier Next, I want to prepare somewhere to actually do the Convocation of the Damned Ritual. So, I'm going to fly... Uh, in fact, let's put a waypoint here. I'm going to fly maybe 500-ish blocks away. Uh, you definitely want to do it somewhere that is not connected to your base via any blocks. So, if we're here and uh, I, I want to build a platform... You need, a, you need blocks for the ritual to actually take effect on. So like you have to actually place some blocks down, but it will spread along continuous blocks. Basically, if you do this in like the overworld in a non-sky block, you know, 800 blocks, this will do. In a non-sky block map, you want to do it more than a couple thousand blocks away from your base. Um, but since here, you know, we're on a void world, it, the ritual is unable to spread across the void. Anyways, um, let me just build a small platform here and then I'll use a builder to build out a much larger platform. All right, Builder, fill in the void for me. I love the Builder. It's such a great tool. I'm not even going to bother lighting this up or anything. You know, it's 
mobs are going to spawn here at night, and that's okay because I'm not going to spend much time here. Um, anyways, I, I, if we need more cobblestone, I'll make a delivery of cobblestone later. But this is where this will host the ritual, um, which takes 128 ritual stones. No dawn stones, so our diviner here is good enough for it. Let's go make those 128 ritual stones plus a uh, master ritual stone. And looks like I'll have to bring over another chest of cobble as well. I brought over some more cobblestone, so you. Oh boy, it's really laggy when it's placing blocks. But uh, place the rest of the cobble. Also brought a tesseract to power this. Anyways, um, I'll just place the ritual somewhere approximately centered ish here. I believe the master ritual stone is near the top of this one. Uh, I guess I can just use a preview to see, right? Yeah, the Master Ritual Stone is at the very top. So let's... I guess I'll take the Angel Block and just build up. Thank you, Angel Block. And we'll... Uh, I think it's about 10-ish blocks high. This is approximately centered here, right? So if I place that there, place the Master Ritual Stone under it... Oh, does it... Does this not show previews in this version? Well, whatever. We'll just start clicking and see what happens. Um, I guess I only have to click once. And then it places all the ritual stones. By the looks of things, the uh, the master ritual stones actually at the bottom of this, not the top. So I'll probably dismantle this and uh, and replace it with the master ritual stone at the bottom. But uh, as you can see, this uses a lot of ritual stones. With the ritual structure complete, we are still not ready to begin this ritual. Uh, this really is quite a handful. Next step is we have to fill eight of these crystal bell jars with each of these, um, I guess you call them aspects. It's roughly equivalent to uh, Thomcraft's like Essentia system. In fact, some of these even share names with Thomcraft Essentia. I think there's Potentia. Um, is Terre a Thomcraft? Or Incendium? I don't know. Uh, some of them even share names that I, I don't honestly know which ones are named what. But what we have to do to fill those jars is first we have to make some of these items. So these are all made in the Alchemic Chemistry set. None of them look too terribly difficult. Um, but the next step is that then we have to fill the Crystal Bell jars with these by melting down these items into essentially like this is the item form of the Essentia and then we can store them in you know, essential form. Each crystal bell jar holds 16,000. Uh, I don't actually know how much each item melts down into. Eight different reagents. So I set up eight alchemic chemistry sets and each one I'll just use for one. So like this set I'm using to make incendium, but that requires simple catalyst first. And this next one I'll use for magic cows, which also requires simple catalyst, so on and so forth. Turns out all eight of them require simple catalysts, so I'm just brewing simple catalysts in all eight of them. Um, anyways, most of these are not that, you know, there's nothing fancy to them, just put the inputs in. Some of them, though, use this one specifically, it's pretty annoying, because lava buckets, um, well, they don't stack, and when they're done, they leave a bucket behind, so we have to extract that. And I think there's another one that has a special case. Uh, yeah, here are water bottles. I don't actually know if it leaves empty bottles behind or not, but likewise they don't stack on the input. Um, one of these, Potentia, uses Strength and Catalyst, so there's like an extra step involved. And that's about it. These uh, Crystal Bell Jars also use, well, they use Concentrated Catalyst even. Anyways, I just have a lot of Blood Magic Microcrafting ahead of me, so, uh, so I just dive headlong into it. Only two of the reagents do anything weird with like non sackable items. One of them uses water bottles or aqua salus here, um, but it doesn't leave an empty bottle behind. So I just have a automated water bottle filler that I'm giving glass bottles to manually. The one that's truly really weird though is the uh, incendium here that uses lava buckets. So um, in these alchemic chemistry sets, the input slots here are strictly input. You cannot interact with the input slots with uh, item conduits or anything like that. Um, there is a ritual that can be used to automate the production of this. Basically, it automates the alchemic chemistry set altogether, so you don't have to like pipe stuff into individual slots. But I don't think it's worth setting up just for a single item. 
what I'll do instead is set up a similar system to fill lava buckets automatically uh, from a, just a large lava source. And then I'll just manually pull out the empty buckets as the crafting finishes. Um, we shouldn't need more than a stack of incendium. So while this is slow and manual, you know, it's a one and done. So I'll deal with that. All of the item form regions are crafted. Now we just have to liquefy them into aspect form. So that is done in a alchemic calcinator, um, which requires a couple of these cracked runic plates. So a little bit more alchemy, but uh, I'm going to make one calcinator per aspect. In theory, there's nothing stopping you from using the same calcinator for all of them. But uh, then you have to deal with like making sure you're working in exact amounts and all that. So let's make eight calcinators. Uh, strength and catalyst. Give me these. There we go. And then we also need the actual bell jars to hold the aspects. So those are these. Let's also make eight of these. And then we need one alchemic router. That's what you use to link all this stuff together. Um, the aspects can flow wirelessly. But there's limits to like how many connections each individual thing can have. I don't know. It's very confusing. Anyways, let's put the eight of these down. Um, if memory serves me right, these also require blood orbs. So we'll yoink the blood orb and the item from each. Put the blood orb in, then you can... Ah, I see. You have to place the item in one at a time. So let's get some conduits for that. But uh, I think the way this works is we'll start with just this one. Uh, it melts it, and you see how it's red now. So now it's holding it in there. And then we can place this down. And how do I link this? If shift, right-click that. Right-click this. Is that going? Nope, wrong way. Okay, I see. So you shift, right-click. Wait, how do I unlink this now? Hold on. It's left click. You first have to li link it to a reagent. So right now it's linked to incendium, which is, but uh, I don't want incend. I want incendium to be sent from here, linking to select to here. Is that the right direction now? No, because I don't see anything being sent. Hold on. I'm not quite sure how I did it, but I somehow got that 1,000 points of incendium into the bell jar. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't show the color, but you see that right above my level, it says a thousand. There's also three different tools. I think the cleanser unlinks everything, and I didn't use the segmenter, so I don't know. A bunch of random shift clicking. It's almost as bad as the uh, Ember connection system. You know what? I take that back. It's worse than the Ember connection system. Um, anyways, I'm going to set up all the bell jars, and um, turns out it takes 16. I think uh pieces to fill a bell jar so i'll just put exactly 16 into each of these but uh yeah the calcinator melts it and then it'll store the result into the bell jar i think i understand how to use the router now so right now it's attuned to incendium i want to switch it to whatever the heck this is so i just shift right click it now it's on magic house all that does is attune the router to the aspect then i regular right click the calcinator to set the source and then I right click the crystal bell jar to set the destination. There we go. And now they're linked. And then I can shift right click to clear the source, move on to the next one. Do it for all of the aspects and the jars are filling. I'll leave these here a little while longer to completely fill. In the meantime, there's uh, a couple more things we need to prepare. First, we need the activation crystal. So this is not a weak ritual. It requires the awakened activation crystal. Um, doesn't look that bad. Uh, we can just upgrade our weak activation crystal to this. And the other thing we need is a way to transmit multiple um, aspects. To, I don't know how to describe it. It's basically like the piping system for, uh, for those aspects. And that comes in the form of alchemic relays. So I believe 
Uh, we need four of them. Each relay can transport up to two different types of aspect. So let's get four of these. We also need another blood altar. So wrap one of those. Just have to encode a few more of these recipes. There we go. One spare blood altar coming right up. We technically could reuse our current blood altar and then put it back when we're done, but easy enough to make another one. Then we need a demon to sacrifice. So I think I have one in a uh, safari net. Let's just, let's see, yeah, the air elemental will do. Just clone him once. Second thought, I don't know if the air elemental actually counts as a demon. So I'm going to summon one of the definitely is a demon demons. Uh, it uses just slightly different reagents, but the process is the same. And then we'll clone him as well and bring him with us instead of the arrow. Oh boy, this guy's much bigger. A lower guardian. Um, Alright, so if we clone him, I, I'm also told that these should... Let's empty that out. These should also drop a demon crystal, which can be used to summon a demon. Let's, uh, I guess let's kill the one that pops out and see if it drops something. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, okay. We'll take this, uh, and we'll take this one with us. And stop running away. Looks like we all dropped these demon crystals. Alright, we'll take a few demon crystals. I I'm not exactly sure what we need, but uh, we'll have one of each, I guess. And lastly, we need 15 million LP in our life essence network. Right now we're at 6 million, and if you look at the bar... Or, you know, 66% full, uh, because our limit is 10 million. So let's swap in these runes of the orb, as well, we have to charge our life fences network. So where's my exchanger? We'll swap out all these capacity runes, because altered capacity doesn't matter when you're charging your life essence network. And now we should see soon see anyways that bar uh it look well it should look more empty i guess the bar on the left side just doesn't actually reflect what your maximum uh lp is but um anyways it the charging from 6 million to 15 million it's going to take a couple of hours so this seems like a decent place to wrap up today's video. We'll come back next time and actually do the ritual. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.